may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, in this chapter, uh, Rebecca hears Isaac tell Esau that he's going to release his blessing on him to, to go out into the field and get him some fresh venison and make him some venison stew. So verse number nine of this chapter, Becky hears it and tells Jacob to bring her two goats. Go fetch me two goats so I can make a stew and you can bring it to Isaac, your father, and make Isaac believe that he's blessing Esau. And, and Jacob says, Mama, he's going to know I'm not Esau because Esau's all hairy. I mean, he had hair coming out his ears and on his nose and, and off his tongue. He had hair everywhere. He was a hairy outfit. And Becky said, Baby, don't worry about it. Just just do what mama says and I'm going to get you blessed. See, see, Rebecca remembered what God said. And, and, and it's vitally important that you remember what God said uh, when you're facing a crisis. You see, Genesis 25, 23, she asked God, why am I thus? And God said, because there's two nations in you. There's a war going on on the inside of you. And the elder shall serve the younger. And, and that's, that was the struggle that Rebecca was going through. And that's the same struggle uh, that you've been going through this year. See, the Old Testament is a shadow and type of, of the New Testament. Our, our natural man, you see, was born first, born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and, and, and then we were born, our spirit was born again, and the, your spirit man is that younger brother that has to make this natural man serve him. That's what the war is all about this morning. That's the fight you've been in. When you, when you go to bed tired and wake up tired, it's because you're fighting in your sleep. Now, now Romans 7, 23 explains this a little better. In the TPT, Paul said, I, I discern a power operating in my humanity, <laughs> waging a war against my moral principles and spirit. See, that's what... Rebecca was going through, and that's what you're going through, and you've been feeling here this morning. Be part of verse 23. The unwelcomed intruder is my humanity. So you're going to have to fight this natural man, which Paul said has enmity against God. Your natural mind wars against the blessing of God. Wars, wars, wars against miracles. Wars against the supernatural. Shout, I got to stay in the fight. Mm -hmm. so, so verse 24, Isaac says, are you my son Esau? And Jacob said, yeah, yeah. He's deceitful. He's got a lying spirit on him. But God's releasing his blessing and favor even though his character is messed up. Oh, somebody's not listening to me right now. I, I, I said God will go ahead and release uh, his blessing on your life because God knows how to adjust and tweak your character, and he usually uses trouble to do that. Oh, Lord, I'm going to need you now. You see, God knows what's best for us. It's not in a man to direct his own path. See, you don't even know what's best for you, but your father does. 
That, that's why David said in Psalms 119, 67, before God afflicted me, I would go astray. But after the affliction, I learned to keep the word of the Lord. Verse 37, David said, it was good for me. Shout, it's good for me to be afflicted. Oh, y'all were weak on that. David said, that's when I learned the ways of the Lord, which are better than gold and silver. Verse 28 of our context, Isaac is releasing eight, nine blessings. Nine is the number of, of new births. And I believe uh, God's going to birth some blessings in this house through his word today if you can have an ear to hear and a heart to believe. Verse 28, the, the first blessing, uh, I'm going to go rapid here, so you're going to uh, you're gonna have to maybe take a picture or go back online. Uh, the first blessing here in verse 28 is the dew of heaven, which brings growth and increase. The second blessing is the fatness of the earth, which represents excess. Is anybody carrying a little excess this morning? Number three, I'm going to give you plenty of corn and wine, which represents God's divine strength and joy. Verse 29, and the fourth blessing, God, God will give you people, God will give you people for your life. I'm going to cause people to serve you. Number five, God will curse those that curse you and bless those that bless you. Chapter 28 and verse three, um, Isaac continues uh, the, releasing the blessings here. Number six, God Almighty shall bless you. Now, the Hebrew word for Almighty here is the burly one, the most powerful one. He has all power in heaven and earth. David said, twice I've heard this. All power belongs to God. Number seven, God will make you fruitful. Number eight, God will multiply you. Verse number four and number nine, the blessing of Abraham will be on your life. Now, I saw these nine blessings uh, uh, all week last week. I struggled to get uh, my hands on it and find the context, but, but I'm here this morning with the context. God wants to release nine blessings on you in the second half of this year. And the first step for receiving these blessings, uh, you have to embrace the affliction and the adversity. Because these are the twins that will push you into the blessing of God. I said they'll push you closer to God. I had a man call me from uh, Beaumont, Texas, and, and, and said, we've been watching online and I just need you to pray for me but, but because I've been, for the last months, I've been dizzy and, and I've just been weak all over. I've been to the doctor and, and the doctor can't find uh, what's wrong with me, but something is wrong with me. I said, it's stress. I said, so what you need to do is just embrace the stress. He said, say that again. I said, you, you, you got to embrace the adversity and the stress. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. But you, you got to embrace it because uh, God has all kind of tools in, in, in his toolbox. But uh, take, take me back to Genesis 27 and 38. Now, now Esau said to his father, do you have one blessing for me? Shout, do you have some blessings for me, God? Verse number 40, Isaac said, you're going to live by the sword, Bubba, but you will have dominion. Verse 41, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing. Maybe you're going to have some haters. 
When God releases his blessing and favor on your life, you're going to have some crazy haters. But they can't stop the blessing of God that he releases on your life. Uh, chapter 29, verse 10. Uh, uh, Jacob sees Rachel uh, coming to a well to water her father's sheep. Now, now, now Rachel... Rachel is Laban's daughter. She's, she's a teenage daughter. L Laban is living in poverty uh, uh, because you'd never send a teenage daughter out to watch over and water the sheep. You remember what David said uh, to King Saul, a bear and a lion came after my sheep and I killed both of them. I, I took the lion by the beard and sm David was a bad somebody. He was a bad motor scooter. <clears throat> but but now Becky is she she's she's what she's there's a big stone over the well and she's wondering how am I gonna get this stone off? Who's gonna who's gonna move this stone for me? And when Jacob sees her. Your Bible said he started hollering and kissed her right on the mouth. He's having a Whitney Houston moment. I will always love you. Please don't cry. I've got to say goodbye because I know I'm not right for you, but I, I, I I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know most of you guys hadn't had a moment like that in a long time. He kissed her and started crying like a little girl. Because Rachel was bad too. Your Bible says she was beautiful and well favored. I, 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 I'll, let, I'll let you interpret that. So, so, so Becky takes takes Jacob to, to Laban and Jacob said, I'll work seven years for her. He was Twitter painted, wasn't he? Seven years? And Laban says, okay. And when he had served seven years, the Bible says it only seemed like a few days. Lord, he was in love, wasn't he? That's all he could think about day and night. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. I don't know who it is. But when he served the seven years, he goes to Laban and said, seven years is up in five, four, three, two, one. And Laban said, okay. I forgot to tell you this. The older daughter in the family, it's our custom that she's married first. Leah was the old maid. I, I mean the older daughter. The Bible said she was tender-eyed. One translation said she was tangle-eyed. My grandma used to say, that girl cock-eyed. Cross-eyed. And, and Jacob said, you've deceived me. There's nothing like being deceived 
<laughs> when you're a deceiver. <laughs> uh, I didn't get no help on that right there. Uh, but, uh, but, but my translation, she, she was ugly as a fence post. I'm trying to be sensitive. The second step, though, for receiving the blessings of God, you have to manage the beautiful and the ugly. I feel like running right down the middle of that aisle there. See, see you remember the promises, okay? God, Isaac said, Jacob, you're going to be fruitful and you're going to multiply. But the problem was, Rachel, the beautiful one, was barren. But Leah, your Bible said, when God saw. Do you, do you know God sees everything? <clears throat> God knows when you're ugly. I'm coming. But, but see, God is so faithful. He'll give you something. You may not have everything, but he'll give you something. Leah starts cranking these babies out. Just one after another, after another, after another. And your Bible says that Rachel envied Leah, the beautiful one. Huh. That's amazing to me. I mean, but, but because Rachel's just drop jaw beautiful. You know, you, you, you've been around women just drop dead beautiful. You know, when they walk in the room, they just kind of get your breath. Like my wife. <laughs> Stand up, baby, so everybody can see how good I did. Stand up. She's once, twice, three times a lady. But, 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 but what I'm trying to show you here is, uh -huh, uh, God caused Leah to be fruitful. So it was in God's plan to use the beautiful and the ugly. Uh, I, I, I didn't get no help over it. Let me tell you, it's God's plan he will use what's beautiful in your life and what's ugly in your life. He'll make all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called. Shout, I'm called according to his purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. When Leah had that fourth baby, she said, I'm calling his name Judah because Judah means uh, I'm going to praise God for his fruitfulness in my life. If God has blessed uh, and brought fruitfulness to anybody's life, I want you to stand uh, and give your God 30 seconds of your best praise. David said, God inhabits the praise of his people. God will come right down and stand right beside you if you'll give him a praise. I said, there's power in your praise this morning. When David was facing an ugly situation, he would break into a dance. He would praise God in the dance. He said, we're going to praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. He said, everything in my company that has breath is going to praise his holy name. He said, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord. Woo. You got 10 seconds to give him your best praise.
if the Lord has been so good to you, you ought to praise him. If he healed your body and saved your soul, you ought to praise him. I'm I'm sorry. Be be seated. I got to hurry. Genesis 30 and 27, Laban tells Jacob that he has learned. See, you, you, you stay around the blessing of God, you'll learn some things. He said, I have learned that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. That's blessing by association. Ooh. He said, God's blessed me and I found favor. Somebody shout favor. Ooh. Verse 43, your Bible says, and Jacob increased exceedingly. Shout, I'm going to increase exceedingly in the second half of this year. Now, Genesis 31 and 1, as I try to prove my point this morning, I'm going to jump in the NIV. The scripture says that Jacob hears, he hears, he hear, he heard. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything that our father owned and has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father. Wait a minute. Laban was in poverty 21 years ago when when Jacob came stumbling in to his life. But isn't that just like people? That's why Abraham told the king of Sodom. King of Sodom said, you take all the goods, all the resources here from the battle, Abby. Abraham said, I'm not even going to take a shoestring from you. Lest you walk away and say, you're the one that made me rich. He said, I lift my hand to the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth. I don't need anything you got to be blessed. Shout amen to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, now, Jacob, Jacob is spanking rich now. Okay, but Deuteronomy 8.18 says, you got to remember, children, it's the Lord that gives you the power to get wealth and not you. It's not your hands. It's not your brilliance. It's not your strength. If you'll continue to give God the glory for every dollar he gives you, He'll keep laying it on you, baby. He'll take the wealth of the wicked and lay it up in your bank account. I got to hurry. This was the, you remember the blessing of Abraham. The last blessing that, that Isaac spoke over Jacob was the blessing of Abraham. And I know this took place thousands of years ago and you're having a hard time to relate. So let me bring you up to date. Galatians 3.14 says, Jesus went to Calvary's cross so the blessing of Abraham could come on the Gentiles. Shout, that's me. No, shout, that's me. Through Jesus Christ so we could receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. Baby, you got to catch this thing by faith. The things of God are better caught than they are taught. I'm releasing blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing in the room today. So you got to... You gotta pull it down. You gotta make a demand on the word of God. Come on and push me now, Lawrence. Uh, see, somebody has to start making a demand. You gotta stand up and say, that's my word right there. That's my prophecy right there. I may be broke this morning, but I'm not gonna stay broke. God's gonna make me the head and not the tail. I'm gonna be above only.
Shout the best is yet to come. I'm telling you, you hadn't seen anything yet. God saves his best for last. Be, 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 be seated. Y'all don't blame me for being long-winded. And you taking all my preaching time. Genesis 32 and 6. Messengers came to Jacob saying, guess what? Guess who's coming? Esau's coming. And he's got 400, 400 swordsmen. Now, Jacob hadn't heard from Esau since he left 21 years ago and went to Haran. But at the same time, Esau went to his uncle Ishmael's house, who was a swordsman, and Esau became a part of Ishmael's army. Your Hebrew said Ishmael was a wild man. He was a crazy man. And if your name's Ishmael, I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about that thousands of years ago. I didn't say you were crazy. You gotta, you gotta listen to what I'm saying. Now, you remember Isaac prophesied and said, Esau, you're gonna have dominion and you're gonna be a swordsman. Well, he didn't know how to use a sword. He was an archer. But his uncle Ishmael was a swordsman. See, and whoever you hang out with, you'll become like. That's why you need to leave some of the crazy, wild people that you're hanging out with alone. You need to take the sword and cut off that relationship. I uh, didn't get no help on that. But, uh, verse number seven. Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed because Esau, he vowed to kill him. He, he was big, bad, and ugly. He was the baddest man in the whole downtown. D -d down, D-O-W-N, downtown. See, I... I've lost so many people. That's why they won't let me preach often around here. Verse number nine. So, so Jacob prayed and he reminded God, God, you said when I return to my country and to my kindred that it would be well with me. You said it would be well. It would be well with me. Uh, uh, the Hebrew word for well here means he would be accepted, that he would have favor, and that he would be successful. Uh, God, I'm in Genesis 32 and 9. I don't know where y'all, oh, there you are now. Okay, uh, somebody shout successful. Mm -hmm. uh, and the third step for receiving the blessing of God, you have to bring words with you when you approach God and start thanking him for his mercy. <laughs> David spent a whole chapter saying his mercy endures forever. Thank God for the heavens and earth for his mercy endures forever. I want to thank God for all of his blessing because his mercy endures. 32 times in one chapter, he's thanking God for his mercy. Hosea 14 and 2 I'm in the New King James Version now, so just trust me till they find it. And so the prophet comes to Israel and says, you need to take words with you. She ought to got to take words with me. And, and return to the Lord. Verse number four, and this is what God will do. God will heal your backsliding. Do you hear how I only got three amens? Because there's only three backsliders in the room. Everybody's been sliding back 
a little bit over something. I could find you if I had time, but God said, I'll heal your backsliding and I will love you freely. Woo. Is anybody thankful that God still loves you? I know you've been a deceiver. I know you've been a liar. I know you've been an idolater. But God said, if you'll just come to me and bring me some words. We serve a God that is a wordsmith. And if you will bring him words and give him thanks, God will start turning it all around. If you need God to turn something around, just jump up and spin around one time. Just one time. No, no. Not just one time, you'll be getting dizzy on me. Verse number five. And I'll be like the dew of heaven for you, and you shall grow and increase. Shout increase. Genesis 32, 10, Jacob says, Lord, I'm not worthy. See, that's what the devil will do to you. You know, you made some mistakes and you're thinking, I got by with this one. But here comes the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren. Have you been having anybody accuse anybody here in the church lately? You have? Okay. They're doing the work of the devil. He's the accuser. Ooh. Lord, I lost the whole congregation on that one. He's the accuser of the... I'm not worthy of your mercy. Oh, for God's sake, Jacob, none of us are worthy. <laughs> I said, every one of us in the house and watching online have a little bit of beauty and a little bit of ugly on the inside, except my wife and Levi. Believe it or not, my wife gets him a Power Ranger outfit. I'm talking about the boots and all. And I hear somebody knocking on my door last night. Open up, it's me. I'm going to shock you. And I opened up the door and I said, my God is the power rangers. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One man just got up and left right there. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, he came back. Okay, then. Jacob said, I'm not worthy of your mercy. When I crossed over Jordan, all I had was a shirt on my back. And now, somebody shout now. <laughs> See, God's mercy is so good. His mercy will give you amnesia. You'll forget when you was crazy in the clubs. I think I'm crazy. I think I'm crazy. Yeah, you were. Yeah. So was Jacob, and so are you ever now and then. Ooh, I done lost. God have mercy. Help me. Shh. No, I'm. All I had was my staff. In my. See, that's some of our testimony <laughs> right there. God help me, Jesus. Oh, you know I'm telling you the truth now. Uh, and he said, but now I have two bands. The Hebrew reverse, refers to. Uh, to the bands here as a double portion. And, th and that's what I saw on the way to church. I was on it Wednesday night or, or last Sunday, but now I'm on it again. I said, God's on it again. I, your double portion in the second half of this year, regardless of what's going on in the first half. Somebody shout double. 
Uh, let me give you a word for it. Zechariah 9 and 12 in the Amplified Classic, the prophet said, return to the stronghold of security and prosperity. See, I don't know why some of us will leave the stronghold. It's like the prodigal son. He said, I want my money and I want it now. And he starts spending it on prostitutes. Oh, I got one, my Lord. Oh, my Lord, 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 Lord. See, see, but he left the father thinking that the grass was greener on the other side. Can I tell you this morning that your blessing and your favor and your prosperity and your security for your family and your finances, it's in the father's house. The Hebrew word for stronghold, it means a fenced fortification and a hedge of protection. Look at the B part of verse 12. And God said, I will restore to you I need 10 people to jump up and shout, I'm coming into the double in the second half of this year. Shout double, a double anointing, double blessing, double protection, double prosperity. Shout double. Be seated, I gotta hurry. Genesis 32, 24. Jacob is left alone. And and see, that's what some of us need here this morning. I'm not talking about being in jail. Because normally they'll put you in a cell with Bubbo. I'll explain that Wednesday night before I introduce the bishop. But you need to get alone with God. Because most of the time, we either got earbuds in. I was, I was trying to, I was trying to uh, get a hold of a guy this week. And, and I was 10 feet from him. And I said, hey, Brandon, hey, I'm paying you. Are you talking to me? See, but we, 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 we got what? Get them earbuds out of your, oh, okay, 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 okay then. I'm sorry. All right then. So he's left alone and he's wrestling with a man. Now see, I, I, I want to thank God right here, right now in this Presbyterian church. And I want to thank my God that he will take the time to wrestle with us. Uh, He could just let us go right into our own demise, but he will take the time to send an angel and knock your crazy hips out of joint. He wrestled all night long. You get in real trouble, we won't have to call a prayer meeting. You won't have to have seven steps to a blessing, uh, four steps to a miracle, five steps for deliverance. You get in real trouble, baby. You'll find yourself praying. It'd be praying stuff like, God, if you'll just get me out of this, I promise, 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 promise. I'm sorry. I'm, I, see, my problem is I have to reach everybody. I have to reach the up and outers and the down and outers. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm back. I'm back. But, but God will take the time. He's the only one strong enough to change your crazy nature. You know, you've made 50 New Year's resolutions. 
didn't even get to the 5th of January. It, it, it takes God to change us. I'm sorry. I, I'm just thankful this morning Whew. that he'll take the time. Now his hips out of joint. Uh, when, I, when I was playing football, I, I got my thumb knocked out of joint, and the coach said, you're all right, and just grabbed it and popped it back. It's never been all right since then. And then that finger, see that middle finger? Uh, don't get a close-up. It's ugly. <laughs> it's painful when God hits you. And God will get you. I said, when you belong to him, he'll come running after you. The only time God ran was when he saw the prodigal coming in from the prostitute's house. And he ran to him and hugged him and kissed him on the neck even before he got a shower. Somebody give God a hand praise for his reckless love. Oh, come on, you got amnesia. You forgot what God covered you. If God wouldn't have covered you, nobody would love you. Nobody would help you. If it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, your enemies would have swallowed you up. Uh, Lord. Verse 28. And the man said, Your name shall no longer be Jacob. See, only God can change your name. Because Jacob's name means deceiver, con artist, liar. You name it, Jacob was it. God still blessed him. God, God, God is amazing to me because, he got, because God knew he could send trouble his way. Ah, uh, yeah. To make all the right adjustments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he said, you're a prince. You have power with God and men. You have prevailed. The Hebrew word for prevail here means to have covenant dominion. Everybody shout covenant dominion. And the fourth step for receiving the blessing of God, you have to stay in the fight even when you're wounded. Now, I told this Wednesday night, but it's worth telling again. I, I, I just heard that, that Layla uh, Ali, Muhammad Ali's daughter, you know, like father, like daughter. You remember that, dads. Uh -huh. She had won 24 straight boxing matches. 21 of them were knockouts. But in her last fight... She had a rematch with someone that was a close boxer to her. And halfway through that fight, she gets a nasty cut over her eye and her nose is bloodied. Now, I, I, I know none of y'all have ever been in a fight, but uh, I, I um, was in the Golden Gloves when I was in school. And I had a guy hit me right square in the nose. Now, both of my eyes closed. I was trying to open them. You get hit just right, all the fight will go right out your toes. Can anybody that's ever been hit in the nose shout amen? All right. She went to her corner, and her trainer said, Layla, all you need to do is walk out there and knock her out now. And she said, when he told me that, 
I thought about my father, Muhammad Ali, and how he fought Joe Frazier and, 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 and was supposed to be beat. Sonny Liston and was supposed to, George Foreman, all three of these opponents um, were supposed to beat Muhammad Ali, but he came on to, into that ring floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. See, and, and, and I, I, I came to help somebody because you're going to have to get your fight back. I, I, I know the enemy's been rolling in like a flood, but you can't just lay down and take it. Shout, I'm getting my fight back today. She said, I thought about who my father is and my fight came back. You, you, you got to meditate for just a minute and remember who your father is. Moses said, our God is a man of war. Jeremiah said, he has a battle axe in his hand and he's never lost a fight. If you believe that, stand and shout amen. I said, if you believe it, give God one more praise. Go ahead and take me to church, Lord. You better get your fight back or you won't be able to keep the blessing of God because Jesus said the thief will come to rob, to steal, and to kill your blessing. Oh! Bishop, but Bishop, I never was trained. Baby, you got the best trainer in the universe. He knows how to fight and win. And if you have to just put your head down and go, then God will land the punches for you. David just started winding up when Goliath started roaring. David ran to the roar. David understood his blessing was at the roar. So instead of running from the roar, he ran to the roar. I wish somebody would help me run this morning. I feel a running spirit. David said, I ran through a troop and I leaped over a wall. Sometime you gotta get aggressive. Ah. That's what I'm talking about. You gotta have you a fight song. Something that gets you stirred up. Something that'll get you aggressive again. You're not gonna casually come into this next blessing. Number four, for those of you that quit taking notes, number four, you got to stay in the fight even when you're wounded. Shut up, staying in the fight. 
Re remain standing. Genesis 33 and 3. And Jacob, and Jacob bowed himself. Oh, God, help me now. Jacob bowed. He bowed himself. Eva, Esau standing there looking big, bad, and ugly. Not you, Anthony, but big, bad, and ugly. 400, 400 swordsmen, trained swordsmen. Four, five, six. And on the seventh time, your Bible said that Esau came running to him. He came running. And the devil said, you've had it now. You've had it now. And Esau hugged Jacob. Hugged Jacob because covenant dominion will always overpower the dominions of this world. See, some of you put your trust in the dominions of this world. It was Daniel that got Nebuchadnezzar straight. When he said, Neb, it's God that reigns over all the dominions of the earth. Somebody shout, God reigns. And I hope you can write while you're standing. But the fifth step to blessing and, and favor and promises. I, I, I gave you nine, but actually there's 10. Jacob said, I'm not leaving the fight until you bless me. And that's, that's when the angel gave him number 10, covenant dominion. Shall I have covenant dominion? Come on, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Shall I have covenant dominion? But number five, number five uh, is to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And God will raise you up. It looked like the odds were against Jacob. But in a little space of time, God touched the heart of Esau. Do you know that God holds the hearts of people in his hand? See, Peter said, God gives grace to the humble. And, and, I, and I know most of you are too proud to come to the altar, but, but if you're here and, and you need God to heal you from backsliding or, or deliver you or, or to heal your body or, or to deliver you from a demonic spirit of anxiety or depression I want you to come quickly come quickly as our elders are coming we're going to pray for you and the prayer of faith the prayer of faith 
it's all about faith in God. The prayer of faith is going to save the sick. And if you committed any sin, your Bible said it'll instantly be forgiven of you. So come quickly.